we're vibrating particles of energy. We think ourselves as solid, but we're not. We are omitting frequencies and our emotions omit frequencies. Our heart is uh, omitting frequencies, our, our individual organs. And so we have a resonating frequency, all of us. Our, our, our sound that we're making are vibrating vocal cords. So we're always using sound, whether it's through healing or hurting or changing our um, emotions, expressing our emotions. So we're always already doing that. And so sound is basically using this knowledge and using ancient um, spiritual practices and healing practices. It's one of the oldest practices for healing, um, but we're putting our intentions behind it, which makes it that much more powerful. Are you curious about discovering ways of making your life better? Then welcome to my podcast. I'm Bob Nickman, and this is The Exploding Human. Listen in while I talk with all kinds of people in the fields of personal growth, health and healing, alternative therapies, psychology, spirituality, environment, and the future. I'm looking for those answers that make life better for everyone. You'll meet cutting-edge practitioners, doctors, artists, filmmakers, business people, and those who have overcome challenges. The brave, the curious, anyone who is out there helping us humans to explore, expand, and explode. All right, thanks for tuning in to The Exploding Human. My name is Bob Nickman. My guest today is Lindsay Foreman, and we are going to be talking about the healing power of sound. But before we do that, I want to invite you to visit my website, theexplodinghuman.com. And over there, you can uh, listen to all the episodes, see photos of my guests, read the synopses of the episodes, a little bio on myself. And there's a donate button if you want to support the show. Appreciate that. And uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman. Add with Bob Nickman to find that YouTube channel. All the episodes are there. You can listen and um, play around on your computer at the same time. Uh, my guest today, uh, Lindsay Foreman, is a sound healer. She uses a lot of different techniques, and we're going to be talking about that today. And some of the wonderful things that sound can do, such as relieve stress and pain and depression and be a mode to... Uh, Increased spiritual connection. So please uh, enjoy. This is Lindsay Foreman. You do work with sound baths, sound healing, and I have not had anyone on this show that does that. So you're my you're my first. And I asked uh, my our mutual acquaintance Mark to find me somebody that does sound, and he did it. And you're here. I'm so happy about that. Well, what's funny is uh is I reached out to him like this like last week just I've just decided to just go for it so I'm just like throwing my net out to the universe and seeing what happens and it just kind of fell into place so yeah it's let's just we can just plug your website if people want to see some visual things and mm -hmm. find out a little bit more about you we'll do it again in the podcast but it's spiritualpathways.info yeah. if you want to check out Lindsay's uh, website how does sound healing how does it work? I mean, I know how it works, how, how it feels to me when I do, um, you know, I listen to a variety of things like Tibetan bowls and gongs mm -hmm. and I, I feel something, but is there, is there some level of um, scientific um, information that people who uh, have never heard about this type of healing can grab onto in terms of the how how sound waves affect different parts of the body and and or different chakras or whatever we want to talk about that's such a great question because you know it's can be as spiritual as you want it to be for yourself or it can be uh there is a lot of scientific backing for sound healing um you know i mean think about ultrasound i mean that's a sound frequency that is moving matter it's creating um, it's creating something out of sound. So, so I'll just, I'll give you like the scientific explanation, um, which 
that I can convey to you is that we're vibrating particles of energy. We think ourselves as solid, but we're not. We're omitting frequencies and our emotions omit frequencies. Our heart is uh, omitting frequencies, our, our individual organs. And so we have a resonating frequency, all of us. Our, our, our sound that we're making are vibrating vocal cords. So we're always using sound, whether it's through healing or hurting or changing our uh, emotions, expressing our emotions. So we're always already doing that. And so sound is basically using this knowledge and using ancient um, spiritual practices and healing practices. It's one of the oldest practices for healing, um, but we're putting our intentions behind it, which makes it that much more powerful. And I think that, um, you know, it can affect you on a physiological, uh, a mental, emotional, and spiritual level. And there is a lot of, um, it's coming into the forefront now, actually, um, as far as it being used to help reduce stress when people are like before surgeries. And so it's, it is a medical practice. It's not mainstream, but I think it's going to be in the future for sure. I hope so. I've had a lot of success with certain sounds, particularly Tibetan bowls uh, and um, gongs. I um, have, you know, I listen to a lot of tapes when I meditate. So that really, and a lot of times it's, it's, you know, I'll see what the, what, what it says, what the frequency does. Is it, uh, you know, a healing one? Is it energy? Is it, um, you know, and, and I don't, you know, whether those descriptions are accurate to the sounds that are coming out of these tapes, I don't know, but I definitely um, am able to uh, try, I, I try different ones to get a different um, feelings depending on what's going on that day. It's our consciousness, right? It's like, it's tapping into the etheric this high level of consciousness that we hold within inside of ourselves. And I think, you know, it's, I do sound and I use sound as a modality to help people tap into that power that they already have inside of them. And I, you know, if you, even on a scientific um, aspect, it's like, if you're fragmented and stressed out and you quiet that stress and that fear and bring yourself back into a state of, harmony or um, calm, your brain functions better. I mean, that's just, that is scientific. They can hook your brain up and see your brainwave patterns and how they're changing. And, and then sound puts you into different uh, brainwave states. And these different brainwave states are really important for us to be able to get into, but they're constantly, we're just constantly, you know, getting disrupted by just everything around us, you know, constantly, yeah. you know. We're bombarded with just tons of input with zero processing. And so I think that it's a really powerful way to sort of filter your mind out and get you vibrating on a frequency that you're able to receive, you know, this intelligent information that you hold inside of yourself already. Yeah, what I what I find is like with meditation and listening to sound that that I I am, I have less stress, but there's more clarity, which yeah. is an interesting combination because you'd think that calming down would make you a little foggy, sleepy type thing, but it doesn't. It's, it's a, it's a clarity thing, which is um, fantastic. I love that feeling. Let's say we're going to talk about your work with individuals. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes to you and they say, Lindsay, um, I am very stressed out or I have physical pain. You probably get that too, I would think. Yeah. How, how do you assess that person and then treat them with, with sound? What does that process look like? For the most part, I think a lot of people feel very fragmented, right? They don't, they're not, I've heard a lot of people can't even take the time to meditate because they're so stressed out. And so you know, basically when they've come to me at that point, they've tried other stuff. And so they're willing to, um, you know, to kind of take on the whole responsibility of tapping into their abilities themselves, teaching people how to 
balance out their chakras or scan their own bodies or when we start to work on sound, um, I always ask them to notice where they feel it in their body. So you're always bringing it back to them and introducing a way for them to tune in to themselves, you know, no pun intended, but that's basically what you're doing is I'm not, I'm not healing this person. I'm, I'm a facilitator and a channeler for allowing them to have a safe space for them to discover that part of themselves. And I think, um, I think that when people feel that, it's kind of like magic to them. You know, like you're saying, it's like you feel better after listening to these frequencies. You're not really sure why. It's because it's resonating with something inside of you that you hold and it's sort of waking that up. And so um, when I work with people, whether it be individuals or in groups, that's really what I talk about basically is finding your own frequency, right? And I think a lot of people um, aren't able to kind of live the life that they want a lot of the time. I think their heart and their mind are very separated uh, due to like infinity reasons. And so I guess my goal with people is to make that connection of their mind and heart. And when people do that, I think they, they are, they're able to, um, happen to their own truth of what is going to work for them and what's not going to work for them. Like you said, it's like in a, in a relaxed state, you'd think that maybe they would be tired or lethargic, but you're not, you're sharp, you're clear. The information of this truth can come through um, that's maybe not able to, if you're just trying to logically think of your problems or solve your problems, because you're an emotional being, you know, and a lot of times our logical brains are really incorrect and they get stressed out when they can't solve problems. And by doing that, you're just kind of creating more problems. Yeah. I've heard that, uh, the, the idea that the answer to the problem is never in the problem. So you can't think your way out of a problem. It, it doesn't really, it doesn't really work like that because usually those things come from something, some, some other place, some sort of a disturbance or a dissatisfaction or a, a, a way of living that isn't working anymore. And you're not sure what could be the solution to that. So coming at it from another place, like a meditative place or, you know, sound can open up certain things in people where they can start to change without using the uh, the logic brain, which like you say, is often very uh, flawed and misguided or um, directed by the past. Our logical brains um, were <laughs> helping us so much. I, I think that it would look a little bit different. Yeah, and we'd be doing a lot better. <laughs> we'd be doing a lot better, you know? And, and, <laughs> and what I, but I think that we have to have that to give contrast to what we need, right? It's like, it's like those things that we go through help us realize we don't want to be there anymore, you know? I mean, but that's up to us. And so I guess, you know, I, I can't do anything. These mantras, these toning, this sound, it doesn't hold any power unless an individual decides to do that for themselves. And then I think when you open up those channels to self-healing and taking responsibility, then that's when things are going to present themselves in your life um, to guide you, you know? But, you know, if people come to me and aren't really, they don't want the answer to be that the answer is themselves, they might not resonate with what I, you know, what I'm doing. And, and that's okay. I, I think that, um, I think that's the cool thing about it. It's like, it's whatever works for you. You know, I, I think that that's really the beauty of our choices in this life. But I think that sound is really powerful. Um, and I just want to, you know, I just want to iterate like why focusing on a problem doesn't work. It's because you're, you're writing on that frequency of a problem, right? You're not in the frequency of the solution. So your, your mind and your heart isn't geared towards finding the solution. It's, it's gonna, it's like a computer. If you look up, like, why is this happening to me uh, in your brain? It's gonna come up with, 
you know, 10 million answers as to why, you know, you look ugly today. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, if we have that amount of power, then we can do the opposite just with intentions and our words and our sounds that we make. We've really underestimated that what we say and what we think just is creating our entire experience. Yeah, thought management. Yeah, and it's, I mean, to me, that's so awesome. I mean, how much, how powerful is that? I love um, actual cases when I would read like psychology books and I would, and and stories about people being, um, you know, coming through something. Can you give me a really interesting case that you had? Um, I've been into like self-healing for a a long time, since my mid twenties. And a lot of that came out of, uh, you know, the childhood that I experienced and what I did after that. And just needing to find a different way of how I was going to live on this planet if I, since I decided, you know, that I guess I was going to stay here, that I needed to find a way to really help myself. And Mm -hmm. um, so I sort of, I don't know, when I, when I set out for that intention, a lot of things started happening and I started learning different modalities. I don't, you know, just do sound, um, it's a lot of other things. And so along the way, I kept picking up these tools uh, to help me learn how to self-heal and to connect with something deeper with inside of myself. And I've always had really powerful experiences um, in doing that. But one in particular, I have, um, I have like a traumatic memory that happened to me as a child. And I've, with even with traditional therapy, I've gone back and done like inner child work on it. But, you know, um, anytime I was prone to like feeling bad, this memory would come up. And it was, it's such, it, it was really a scary, sad memory. And even though I had worked with that child, it, you know, I still saw myself in that memory as a five-year-old, just like stuck to the floor and I couldn't move no matter what, even if I went and gave comfort to her as a child or, you know, as an adult and stuff. Um, so when I was in sound school, we had to sort of, uh, we had to create a, um, like a 20 day regimen for ourselves, um, for a healing, basically like a healing, um, practice that we would do 20 days in a row. And it, you could do toning, you could do music. It didn't matter, but every day for 20 days straight and. So I would, you know, I was learning different mantras and chants and, and um, I was doing these toning, the five Tibetan warrior syllables, and I was really getting into it and I'm very visual. So it's sort of like just these, you know, just spontaneous visualization started coming while I was doing this toning and I just started doing the forgiveness chant and it just switched. And this memory when I was a child just like came into the forefront like a movie and without me having to go and decide what I was going to do I it this whole situation kind of unfolded and um like it's like downloaded instant in information that I got and I could feel not only how I wasn't you know like I couldn't forgive myself as a child for not being able to help myself not being able to forgive myself for being vulnerable, not being able to forgive um, the person that was responsible for me being there in the first place. It's like all of that changed to where I actually felt um, the person that was doing that to me when I was five, I just felt their heart and how like nobody would ever want to be that way. Nobody would ever want to feel that way in their heart self, right? And so it's hard, it's really hard for me to explain what I'm trying to say, but it was just like instant healing and instant freeing. I had forgiveness for the person that the adult that was there, I had forgiveness for myself. And I actually saw myself as a little girl, like get up and start dancing to the chant that I was saying out loud. And I mean, I'm 
I think that, you know, tears were falling and I was really emotional release and I've never had that memory come up again ever. And this is something I like, this is a memory I've had for my entire life that regardless of how much work I would do on it. And I'm not saying it's going to happen the first time somebody comes to a sound session because I don't think that, um, I don't think it's a one-time thing. This is a lifelong practice. It's a tool that you can use to tap into ways to heal yourself, to raise your frequency, to raise your vibration, to um, be in a state of forgiveness and compassion in this realm that you live on and what's happened to you and understand that these are lessons. You know, I learned what I needed to learn through that. And it, it was really a beautiful experience um, using that. And it just kind of spontaneously happened. It's really powerful. You know, I think most of our issues and problems do come from some kind of a traumatic uh, past, uh, either one event or ongoing events. Yes. That keeps coming up in a lot of my podcasts is, is trauma. And I think that's where a lot of the things come from uh, with people struggling in present day life because of something traumatic that they just aren't able to let go of or see in in its proper perspective to to move forward so that's a really powerful experience i um thank you for uh, you know telling me about that i i you know i've uh I, I, I have done a, a number of podcasts on trauma different ways of dealing with that so i'm not i'm no stranger to that uh yeah to that issue. And, and um, I love that sound was, was your way to, to deal with that. You know, um, one of the things I've noticed when I do um, some of the sound stuff that I've done is that um, my, I will have this involuntary, um, uh, I guess, um, muscle spasms or, or uh, discharging of energy in different parts of my body where I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, sometimes I'll feel it in my chest or my stomach, or I'll, I'll go up and down, you know, with my legs, like they'll just vibrate. And the more I sort of release into the sound and sort of go, what part of my body is this affecting? You know, where am I really feeling this? And I'll have this discharge of energy. It's really uh, an interesting thing, like where I, you know, where I'm holding this stuff. So, and, and I have to say, it's a little bit scary sometimes, a little bit. It's like when you experience trauma, it was so traumatic that, you know, a part of your brain uncoupled so you could live through that experience, right? And it gets stuck in our bodies, you know, it gets trapped in the muscles and, and these emotion, emotions get associated with it. That's why, you know, if you're a child that, you know, you were told that you have a horrible voice when you were just singing your heart out, you know, and dancing to your favorite song, you know, that's a big reason why people's throat chakras are shut down and they're feel meek about expressing themselves and speaking up and speaking their truth because we were traumatized and we were traumatized in a way where we were so open and our, you know, our brainwave was in theta, which we were creating and, you know, just our imaginations and just living in this beautiful state as a child and getting shut down that gets stuck in your body. And if you think about it, it's like, you know, it's like these, we're like, oh, children are just so great. They're wonderful. But then when they don't grow up the way as fast as they should, we sort of beat it out of them and tell them that they're too old to be living in this fantasy world. And then you grow up and kind of, you know, make your way through um, your life. And then when you realize you want to start healing yourself you what you want to get back to how you felt as a child and the more trauma we release the more we're able to be and understand that that's really where it's at you know to be in a you know using your imagination to create magic in your life and you know it's like that is really powerful and we think it's childish but it's not it's I, I think that that is an extremely healing way to live your life is to be curious, be in imagination, be in creation. And I think that sound really, especially with training brain waves, it, it really allows you to do that because it releases things that don't serve you anymore. It allows you to look at your belief systems and ask how it's benefiting your life. You know, and I, 
And, and I don't think sound's the only thing that can do that, but I think it's really powerful, especially with you, if you couple it with other things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the leg- the legitimate version of it is music that, you know, well, that's, music is people the listen to music. That's the legitimate sort of society accepts, oh, it, that's music, That's that fits. But just pure sound is not quite there yet, quite as accepted. I just had this memory, uh, which I've had before, Mm -hmm. but uh, when you were talking about being uh, childish, uh, people saying you're being childish. Well, there is a difference between being childish childish and being childlike, very different. And when I was a kid, I'm going to tell you about this. When I was a kid and I would be very exuberant and highly energetic and free and, you know, uh, a little more uh, off the charts, if there is such thing as a chart. <laughs> mm-hmm. My mother would say to me, this is the phrase, settle down, it's going to wind up in tears. Yeah. Now, what yeah. kind of message is that? And it didn't wind up in tears, it wound up in anger and frustration because I got shut down. Right. Um, it didn't make me cry, it made me really mad. It's just like, why can't I do this thing that I that I want to do? Now, of course, later on, I realized that was more about her than me. Some some fears that were there and some feeling that if you were too exuberant, you you know, there, there's actually a word in um, Yiddish uh, called it's it's Kenahora, which basically means don't have too much fun and be too exuberant because God will see that take it away and more. <laughs> What your mom was trying to do at the best of the ability that she could do at the time was she was really trying to keep you safe. Yes. But in such a, you know, such a, like a, you know, you've seen the movie Carrie, you know, it's like, they're all going to laugh at you. It's like, that's how, you know, to me, that's, those are false. That's false. And the reason why it creates anger with you is because it didn't resonate with you. And but we, we don't know at that age that that's not the truth. And so it, you know, it still affects us. And so we have to learn to let go. Like that's trauma work really is realizing that what we went through as, you know, children is, was not the truth. It's not the way to be. It's not the way to feel about yourself. But that the people that did it were doing the best that they could. And your mother was probably told that as a child too. You know, yeah, I think so. more than protecting me, she was trying to protect herself from having to deal with this idea of, oh, my kid's going to be crying and I'm going to have to comfort this kid and then I'm going to feel bad. I think it was more self-protection than it was protecting me. Um, but who knows? <laughs> it doesn't matter I now. I think, too, that it's like, it's, it, it is like, the, don't get your hopes up. Don't try too hard. I don't want to see you disappointed. It'll break my heart. I don't, you know, don't put yourself out there. And that's constantly these messages that we get. But if you see, it's like people that just go for it, they're just shining bright, you know, and that's what we all are able to do. You know, children, they just have such a bright lights and you just see, I've seen it, you know, they'll get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And um, I think that, you know, now is the time to just, you need to work on your own light. You need to find your light whatever resonates with you on how to do that and, sh- and just shine as much as you can and realize that, you know, um, you are like the key to your own prison of getting yourself out of what you're in. And I'm not saying that that's easy. I understand I've done a lot of trauma work. You know, that was my background was in working in social work and it wasn't working for me. And so I chose a different path. But I'm, you know, it's like, I'm not naive in thinking that, you know, you're just going to get a sound bowl and all your problems are going to be solved. But I do think that just taking the time to examine and take responsibility for your own healing is going to create something positive in your life, for sure. I was intrigued with something you said um, about sound school. I didn't know there was such a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me what that is. I don't, I, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I could assume that people had to learn these things somewhere. You can certainly self-teach. I don't, it doesn't, you know, I, it doesn't certain, it doesn't require, I don't think, um, excuse me, uh, going to a school, but I wanted to, I'm, I really mm-hmm. like to educate myself, okay. you know, and it was something that called, 
called out to me. Like I've known about sound healing for a long time, just because I've, I've studied a lot of holistic, you know, and I've read a lot of books about self healing and color therapy and just all these ways that you can tap into, you know, healing your mind, body, spirit. Um, but so it just kind of happened and I found a school and it's a, it's a, it's a pretty awesome school. It's, um, the sound healing Institute out of San Francisco. And I, I didn't go there to do school. I just did it online. So I was in school for about six months and I think it really is beneficial to learn the, like the science behind it, the frequencies that we omit. And then I also had like teachers that have been doing sound, you know, before people even knew that it, that was possible. Like one of my teachers has been doing sound for like 50 years and we didn't just learn about sound either. You know, it's, um, we learned about sacred geometry, somatic patterns, frequencies that create somatic patterns. Um, we learned just about it being uh, like ancient practices and really learned and took the time and devotion to tap in to that and then also share it with these people from all over the world sort of having this same experience of wanting to learn sound was that was a healing experience unto itself so it sounds amazing it was wow. really cool i mean i was going to school with um people in my class from all over the world and so to get different perspectives on their culture and their information and you know, the way they tap into consciousness, it's, it, it was really, it was really cool. And we always had to, like when we got into um, the founder, uh, David's class, the first thing we had to do is go around and each one share the sound of how we feel at the, like right now. And so it was so oh, funny great. to hear all these people <laughs> making just crazy noises, you know, or sometimes we would take a class and we would howl for, you know, five minutes or we would we even took um like professional vocal uh classes and you know just you don't think you're doing anything and I mean I was in the car one day just singing and I was able to hit notes I've never been able to um hit before just because you're, you're also strengthening your vocal cords it works on a physiological level as far as like uh strengthening the muscles in your stomach so your digestion is better I mean it's it's really cool, you know, and it was just interesting to learn all of these things through school that would have taken probably 50 books. Yeah, that sounds what's the name of this? What's the name of this place? I'm going to write it down. It's the Healing Sound Institute out Institute. of San Francisco. And I'll I can send you their website if I I'm the worst at retaining information. Yeah, well, I can <laughs> find it. Yeah, but that's amazing. So they sell their bowls. They do online classes. And they also do like, if you want to be a musician and um, put healing frequencies in your music, they have a whole nother um, like, pro like uh, music, pro you know, production side to it. So you can take oh, okay. mm -hmm. all kinds of different classes. Um, I, I was turned on to this uh, something uh, you probably already know about it, but solfeggio frequencies. Yeah. And um, so sometimes I'll look and they'll say, oh, this is for, um, you know, healing the body. Try this frequency. And it has the meg the uh, the hertz uh -huh. written next to it. Right. This is for, you know, um, higher consciousness or whatever. And I'll try the different ones yeah. just to see what happens. And sometimes I'll put something on and it'll make me angry. Yeah, maybe it needs to bring something up inside of you that you need to get out. I don't know. You know, it's. <laughs> it's a personal you know it's so personal just the whole um you know 432 that's the resonant frequency of the earth of the universe and that's what our music used to be tuned to i mean that's uh, the egyptians the romans the greeks all their instruments up until like the 19th century all of the instruments were tuned to 432 and then it switched i forget the guy um i think he was french and they switched it to 440. And if you look up somatic patterns from a frequency on 432 versus 440, there's a significant difference. Like the 
the 432 creates somatic patterns, which are like snowflake patterns, sacred geometry, and it's formulated, it's uniformed, it's beautiful. But the 440, if you look at it, it's lobby, it's blurry, it's discombobulated. That's what all our music is tuned to, is 440. All your instruments, like, well, the sound bed that I have is tuned to 432. But I mean, I just, I mean, that's an interesting thing to just even think about. Like, why would that be if it's creating like discourse on a frequency level? Why would all of our music be tuned to 440? It's pretty I interesting. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. You know, it, it is interesting, but knowing that doesn't mean, you know, just knowing that means that listening, you know, to these frequencies are very, very healing, but sometimes they could have uh, effects on you that maybe bring something up to the surface. Instead of running away from it, I should probably dive straight into it and see what happens. Well, yeah, you could. I mean... The thing is, is like, we all have that with inside of us, right? I mean, we all get angry, all get pissed. It's like, just because I do sound healing, I'm not like, go ahead, cars, cut me off. Like, it's fine. It's like, oh, I'm of course, <laughs> I get really upset really quick, you know? Um, but I've also been able to go back to baseline faster than I've ever been able to in my entire sure. life. <laughs> Yeah. You know how when you're like, uh, like, particularly at night when it's quiet out and you're listening to animals, crickets and birds and, you know, whatever sounds, yeah, I'm not talking about being in the city. I'm just talking about being in a quiet place, maybe mm -hmm. some trees and all that. That music that goes on where you hear, it feels like they're all interacting because they are. Right. And that is that that would probably be a 432 frequency i would imagine because it's the it's, it's just nature as it as it is yeah well and uh, you also have lots of like multiple frequencies and sounds going on so it's like a symphony too it's, it's a like, symphony it's, absolutely which is so beautiful and you know your body is a symphony it's like you get quiet and all of a sudden your stomach's making noises you're you know and it's really, um, you're constantly making sounds and you're picking up on those sounds all the time, but um, we're not necessarily aware of those sounds, but that's why getting quiet and connecting with nature and your body, it's like, there's such a high intelligence there and giving yourself the time and space and the quietness to tap into those, I think are healing because we are those, like we are nature you know, there's no, there's no separation except what we create, you know? And so when we tap into that, we, that's why it resonates with us so deeply is because we're going, we're, we're going back to the whole of ourselves, you know, and I, you know, it just even, um, this is really interesting learning this in school and it makes a lot of sense. It's like, even people, people that have depression, the way that they talk, you know, is really flat and kind of monotone and they don't have oh, huge yeah, yeah. range, you know? And so yeah. you just think about it like that, people that are really expressive and kind of happy or, um, you know, just kind of in their own frequency and comfortable, they're more, you know, they can, they have a higher range, you know? And you can, um, they have these, it's, they have computer equipment that you speak into the, and it, is what tones you have and what tones you're missing and so like at the sound in an institute they'll feed those tones to you which changes the range of expression you're able to so it can help with depression just hearing the tones that you're missing which you know and if you think about it, it's like you know, if you wake up and you, you know, you're like, uh, blah, blah, you know, just kind of groggy, it's like you're on, you're omitting this frequency. But say you open up, you know, your stocks or whatever, and you find out you just earned like $5,000, you know, overnight, you're, you know, your voice is immediately going to go, you know, up in range, and you're going to be using these long tones to express your happiness. And, you know, I, I just, we're doing it all the time. Just sound is making you aware. And then it's using a lot of like these um, seed syllables, um, healing mantras, and like 
chance that puts you into a hypnotic state to where you can access your own intelligence and raise your vibration and your consciousness. If somebody wanted to start with um, exploring this territory on their own without doing anything else, what would you recommend that, where they start? There's, I'll take the five Tibetan warrior syllables because these are okay. my favorite, right? They resonate with certain chakras and you could look it up. So it's, you know, it's pretty easy, but basically you're making like, ah, uh, om, ooh, oh, those aren't the five Tibetan warrior syllables, but they're long seed syllables that are in a lot of the sacred words and deities, right? It's in Yahweh, Shiva, Ganesha, Krishna, God, Allah, Buddha. You know, it's like, these are long vowel sounds. So they're, they have a sacredness to them. And, you know, it's like when we're soothing ourselves, like, you go into a hot bath you're like oh you know so these are soothing sounds that we make they're sacred sounds and so toning these in specific areas or just to get started um, with toning i would say that those are really a powerful way to create those sounds and then they begin to activate your resonating chambers inside of your body because you're a walking instrument you're a vibrating instrument um i would say start with that it's free you can look it up i've heard a lot of people you know i was saying that can't meditate because their minds are going 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 well when you were talking about the different um frequencies like higher frequencies higher toning like the e's and the ahs and the a sounds those really help with your higher chakras and like your your upper body like your mind and then the lower vibrations, like the ohm and the oohs and the ohs, um, mm -hmm. help with your lower chakras. But what's really cool is like whichever ones resonate with you at the time. I've used different frequencies or different tones and different seed syllables, like just spontaneously, intuitively, I would say. But I would say start with toning. And the five Tibetan warrior syllables are really super cool, I think. It's to banish negativity. And it's basically, you know, you're, you're clearing space within your mind. You're um, going to your throat chakra. And then you are basically creating clarity. And being able to balance your throat chakra is going to allow you to not only speak your truth, but hear the truth. Because like you said, you have clarity. So you can, you know, you resonate with what's true. And then you're going to your heart chakra, cultivating like compassion, compassion for everything, you know, compassion for yourself, compassion for this realm that we're on, compassion for what people are going through and compassion for yourself for even being in judgment of yourself and others. And then you go down to your sacral chakra and using a specific tone, you are basically, um, because when you're creating space in the body, you want to fill it with your intentions. So you go down to your sacral chakra, which holds your emotions, and you're tapping into higher vibrational emotions. So if you want to, you know, invite joy and gratitude and abundance and you know, clarity or, um, you know, happiness, right? So you're cultivating all that. And then you go down to your root chakra and you transfer that and manifest that into the 3d world mm. right so because you're sacred or your your root chakra is really your connection to to the earth and so you're connecting your spiritual self your heart self which is really you know the connector of your spirit in your physical form and you're you are manifesting that which you want to bring into your life and I think if you start with that and you you know you make that a daily practice to tap into doing that I think you know, shortly you would, you'll, you'll have an experience, you know, if you're willing, you know, that's it. It's like, I was talking to myself uh, the other day and I was, you know, kind of pointing out, it's like, none of these mantras, none of these tones, none of these sounds have any power unless we do them wanting to raise our vibration. I, I mean, I think that's when miracles happen, you know, spontaneous healing, maybe, you know, things that were buried that you weren't really maybe aware of, but then all of a sudden you make this connection and understand maybe that's why you've been acting or feeling 
this way in every relationship that you've ever been in in your entire life, you know, it keeps happening to you. Like, because we're raz- we're resonating on certain frequencies. And- yeah. You always hear people go, why do I keep picking the same people? <laughs> yeah, I know. Those people are always going to be there. But when you change the frequency that you're on, those people are no longer, you're going to love yourself enough to not have that in your life. You know, you're going to understand not that you're better, but that staying with in a, in, in a, in something like that, whether it's in a relationship with yourself, which that's really the one that needs to be healed, but you're no longer allowing that to be okay because you love yourself enough and you can love that person, but being with a person that you don't want to really be with, or that, you know, that you're not that isn't, you know, a good, that's, that's not good for anybody. That's just, you know, and what's funny is that on a level, whether people are aware of it or not, they, we already know that we already know the answers to how to do things. We just are so fragmented, yeah. um, whether intentional, intentional, you know, and I think a lot of things, um, why sound is powerful, but why it can be intimidating is because you have to look at yourself. And I think that that can be intimidating and terrifying for a lot of people. Part of that too, is that there's a vulnerability that happens when you, um, even if you were, you know, make a sound alone, that wasn't something that you was okay by society standards. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and so you have this sort of collective, uh, society judging you in your own mind yeah it's like well i can't make that sound even alone i won't do that because it's embarrassing and i'm not going to do that because I'll, I'll feel or look foolish but to whom right really it's because it's to yourself because you're creating this reality that you're saying is going to happen but you know it's funny me if i sat outside my where i live in my neighborhood and just started singing I don't think anybody would, you know, I, I don't think anybody's going to be like, what in the world's wrong with that? You know, they might think I'm weird or whatever, but I think when they see people expressing their truth, I think, I think that resonates on a level, whether people are aware of it or not. And nine times out of 10, people would be like, right on. I went to a, this uh, live band here in Juneau where I live and uh, I go up and they're just playing this killer music and nobody is dancing. Nobody. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And so, and I was just, I walked in and I went, I even put my coat down and just walked in, went up to the dance floor and started dancing. And about 10 people got up and started dancing. And it's like, I'm not saying I'm some sort of crusader, but it's like, I just feel like when I, I don't care whether they're dancing or not, but I did make that's the observation. That's what you wanted to do. That's what yeah. I want to do. And that's yeah, and it gave them permission. People need to give their selves permission. Nobody is not giving you permission except you. You know, and that's ultimately, uh, you know, when I think like deep healing begins is you're resonating on the fre- your own frequency. You're tapping into your truth, and you're living your life in accordance to your own happiness. And I think a lot of times you know, it gets twisted. Like that's really selfish. Like you need to put yourself last. You shouldn't be so happy. You shouldn't be so confident. It's like, yes, you should in an authentic way, not that in a, an embitterment of somebody else's way, but for your own joy, because I think that's contagious. You know, it, it really is. It's, you know, when, when I'm around somebody whose lights on, I mean, it's fun to, yeah. Hang around them. Yeah, it is. And, it, you know, the people that don't like that are usually fairly miserable and they don't want to see, they don't want to see that because it reminds them of how dark yeah, their energy might be. Yeah. It, it, it hurts. And so, yeah, I've yeah. been both. <laughs> I have too. Oh man, I have too. You know, but I can be aware now. We already have mantras going on in our minds all day. And so yeah. you might as well create the mantra that you want. And I think sound is a real powerful way to do that. And I, I just, I'm a nerd about it. I think it's just magical. 
Well, I'm so happy that you're helping so many people with what you do. This is a was a great talk. I, you know, I've learned quite a bit and I'm going to do a little more research on my own now that I've got some new information. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. If the um, people want to get a hold of you, uh, your, your website is spiritualpathways.info. Yes. And you can find lots of great information about Lindsay there and what she does in her classes and uh, her teaching and all kinds of new directions for you in the world of sound. Anybody that wants to reach out, you know, I'm, I'm all, I just want to connect. That's my whole deal. You know, with everything that's going on in the world, I just, I want to connect with people in an authentic way. And I, they don't even have to contact me about sound if they just want to talk about whatever I don't it doesn't matter really I just think that you know really connecting with people is um is really important and I agree I agree and that's one of the reasons I've wanted to do this podcast for a long time I want to see I want to bring these ideas to as many people as possible so uh, earth healing I guess it would be the the, the, the cool. overall global uh, uh, attitude that I uh, would like to foster. Yeah. Well, when you raise your vibration, you are creating more. I mean, that's powerful. That is, that is a million times more powerful than creating darkness. I wonder what would happen if you got every, all the billions of people on the planet to chant at the exact same time. Oh, it'd be right. Can you imagine how amazing that would be? It would be really, it would really be amazing. You know, they have done studies as um, of doing that uh, in certain areas where like 20,000 people got together and meditated and it really did have effect on um, where they were doing it at. And I always try to do that. You know, I try and I always bring light and just shine as much light on the earth and the universe and everybody as I can when I'm in meditation, because that's really all I can do. You know, it's just keep my light bright. So that way I can show up, you know, and, and just have that be just, you know, my intentions for how I go about life. And yeah, that's really the only control we have. And I think once we realize that, I think it feels a lot more powerful than trying to control all the other things that we just don't have any power over. Thank you so much for doing the. Yeah. Oh, thank you. This was really fun. It's a- well, thanks for listening in to The Exploding Human. Please visit my website, theexplodinghuman.com, and the YouTube channel. Subscribe there to uh, The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman. Much appreciation for uh, listening in, and a big second thanks to Lindsay Foreman. And uh, have a great day, everybody. Thanks.